Uh, please welcome Tom. Hi, so uh, good afternoon and thank you very much for coming. Uh, my name is Tom Ron and I will uh, present a joint work with a friend and a colleague, Liv Mizrahi, who couldn't attend. Uh, you can see both our slides and the card on this link. I apologize if it's not very clear, but it's GitHub, Niv M, Learning Chess. So, uh, what are you going to talk about? Today is Learning Chess from Data. While everyone wants to make a computer uh, play chess smarter, we're a bit modest, and we just want to make the computer play chess. Okay? Um, so, what's on our mind? We want to know if a computer can le learn chess only by looking at uh, data of chess games. Um, so there are many uh, questions that can be asked in this domain. We're going to focus today uh, on two of those questions. One is, giving a board state, uh, can we make, can we do a specific move? Is it a legal move? And the other one is, game over, given a board state, is it a checkmate? Is the game, has the game ended? Of course, if those are possible, then uh, the sky is the limit. And what else can we empirically learn about other systems? Maybe um, f some physics and other things. Uh, I want to mention this, that this is a work on progress. Uh, we're still working on it. We have additional and uh, further ideas. But I came here uh, today to show you what we have done so far. OK, so let's start. And what we know about chess, and there is, uh, first, tell that there is um, constant tension between a uh, feature that we allow ourselves to know when um, doing this learning process and features or other things that we want to know. But for first, we know that there are two sides, two parties who play the game. We know that a game could end with either one winner or a tie, no two winners or other situation. We know that the board is eight by eight and uh, doesn't change through the game. We know that there are different pieces that have different unknown properties, such as how can how, uh, those pieces move? Uh, can they eat other pieces? Uh, what happened to them when they get eaten? Maybe promotion for pounds and so on. Okay. Okay, uh, so the data set uh, we worked on is uh, given in algebraic chess notation. If we'll have some time in the end, I'll show you how it looks like. But the idea is that every square on the board is represented by a letter A to, to H and the number 1 to 8. And the move is basically done from one square to another. Uh, usually only the uh, two square is written and uh, while there's only one piece that can do that move, um, or if it's not clear, then the, both the to and the from square is written. Uh, we ignore the metadata on this set, such as player ranking, location, and so on. We had just a bit more than um, one uh, 100,000 games uh, with full or partial description. There were many games that didn't end either with a checkmate or a uh, tie just ended in the middle, and we had a bit more than 8 million moves with uh, this distribution between the different pieces. Uh, we used a, a Python library package, which is called Chess, that allows us to parse uh, chess algebraic notation and provided the board uh, status, provided uh, methods like is this a chess, is this checkmate, and so on, and some PyLab, uh, mainly SciPy, some Matplot, for uh, plotting and uh, NumPy. Basically, we thought we would, had, we would have eno enough uh, or big enough data for uh, doing MapReduce, and all we build it as we thought we were going to do MapReduce, but uh, for uh, this time, it was enough to do it on a single machine, maybe some in the future. So the third thing we wanted to do, uh, the first question we addressed before, the game on, can we do a simple move? So the most naive thing would be, okay, have we seen that move before? 
by saying this move, I mean the board status and the move I want to do? If so, yes, good, do it, no, try again. Maybe there's not enough data, so I haven't seen it move, or maybe it's not legal, and therefore I haven't seen it. And it's not efficient on neither running time or memory. So, well, and of course there's no learning uh, done here, so let's uh, move to our second try here. And uh, so for each move, for each, uh, move we made, we checked the uh, difference from the uh, two square, to, uh, from square and two square, and we uh, draw the diff histogram. For example, if the pound move uh, two steps on the first time a pound can move, then the x difference is zero and the y diff is two. And uh, we did some adjustments of the black and white, so it would be uh, relatively. And now you can see uh, those histograms. So this is a histogram for pound. A pound can move either one step forward, two step forward, or one step forward and to the side, and um, to, to each side. Uh, this is how the bishop move. Um, this is how the rook move, only stretch. This is how a knight, knight move. It's uh, kind of nice. Uh, the king, and you can see that the king can move uh, one step to each side and the uh, castling to one of the sides. Okay, so the pros of this approach is it's very good for common uh, moves and uh, it's getting better as this uh, data size grows, of course, uh, and it's fairly time and memory efficient. We can code all this in really, really simply. And, however, it doesn't take into account the board status. So if there are pieces uh, in the way, I cannot answer this question, or I can answer it wrongly. So, um, so it's a necessary condition if we have enough data, but it's not sufficient. So the uh, next take we did on this idea was that uh, for each move, we not only looked at the move diff, but also at the surrounding of uh, each piece, so you can see here, um, this is roughly the idea, and we have uh, three possible states. One is occupied, one is three, and one is out of the board. If we're standing off the edge of the board, then some of the uh, squares can be out of the board. Uh, and this is some of the results we got, uh, aggregating those histograms and uh, doing some grouping on it. So for example, for the queen, if the uh, queen wanted to move on this direction, moving two, uh, at least two steps, then uh, the square above it and on the right must be free. And that makes sense uh, knowing the chess rules. Another thing about the queen, if you want to move seven steps uh, downward and right, then this, this means that she's moving across all the board. Therefore, she must stand in the, in the corner, and this square must be free. Okay? Cool. Uh, so is uh, the king, if there is castling and uh, the king move, then uh, the one near it should be free, must be free. Uh, also for the pawn, if the pawn go, um, goes forward, and oh, surprisingly, nothing for the knight. And <coughs> no chess rules, we know that the, the knight can jump over pieces. However, not having this rule doesn't tell us anything because maybe there is not enough data, maybe there is nothing relevant, but that's nice for us knowing the, the rules of the system that the knight can skip over pieces. Okay, um, so the pros of this uh, approach is also we keep it efficient, not too much data that we, need, we store, and of course runtime, uh, we take the surrounding into account, so we can argue whether the surrounding is uh, one radius, two radius, more, but also, also doing this we says, tell us that uh, we um, have the trade-off, I talked before, that we have some external knowledge about the game and about uh, the environment we are in, so uh, again, this trade-off, and um, the main uh, comp about this or disadvantage is, is that we assume that moves are independent of one another. 
And while it, we can usually say that it's true, it's not true for all uh, the moves. For example, castling, a king cannot do castling if there was chess before or if the king moved before. And there are several more, uh, more moves that are, li are limited by this limitation. Um, so, okay, uh, this is uh, all we're going to discuss about moves today. Uh, and we still have an idea uh, to improve it, but, uh, but we know that uh, this gives roughly good results. And it's, of course, less generalized, which I mentioned before. Okay, so uh, now for learning checkmate, and here we ask, giving a state of a board, is it a checkmate or not? Uh, we're not asking whether, uh, if it is a checkmate, who won the black or the white? We might be asking that in the future. Uh, okay, the, we used several data sets, uh, 10K, 30K, 800K, the training set we used, 40% uh, of this we used uh, for training, 60 for testing, and uh, we had 50-50 of true and false samples. Of course, uh, the real distribution, the real probability is much less because you only have one checkmate at most at each game, maybe less. And uh, we use SVM classifier with linear kernel. Um, we want probably won't use it in the future, although we had some nice results just with uh, this naive classifier. Um, now, um, crash course about classification for uh, people who don't come from this domain, really crash course. Um, I know I speak too fast, I'm, I apologize. We have a lot to talk about today. Okay, so uh, we start with data, and uh, then we extract features, uh, and we'll talk about the features uh, we, we use uh, in a minute, but features can be uh, count feature, boolean features, categories, man many others, maybe a combination, maybe uh, the features uh, depend on one another, uh, there are models for each uh, problem, and then uh, there is a classification, some of the data is used for training, some for testing, some you predict, uh, we use SciPy for this uh, mission, and actually we were able Cypher is very, very general, and we were able to use uh, very, uh, a code that we used before for a totally different task, just uh, applying uh, our feature extraction and pushing it to the classifier we had. And actually, um, it, another uh, good feature of Cypher, it is very easy to uh, toggle between different classifiers. They all have um, um, terrain and estimate and fit. Um, functions, so uh, just play with it. Okay, so here again we have a few versions. Uh, so the first version we had was uh, simple count features. What, what it, that means, first we counted the number, the total number of pieces that were on the board, then we counted how many white pieces, how many black pieces. For each type of piece, we counted how many uh, Pistol, for example, there were five uh, white pounds and three black pounds, so we had a total of uh, eight pounds. We also counted the uh, number of different white pounds, five and three black pounds. So uh, this brought us to something that, um, well, is a bit better than a monkey, uh, with a accuracy of uh, 70. We had, uh, for the cases who were checkmate, we were able to say 80% uh, that this is a checkmate, and we were, for not checkmate, we were able to say in 59% uh, of the time that it's not a checkmate, but then we had some um, misclassifications. So, well, we want to be much better than a monkey, uh, so we, we moved to the next uh, thing. And the next thing was using the previous features and uh, using uh, data about the first degree neighbors. Uh, in this case, we didn't uh, look out of the board, and we excluded that, but uh, we'll do that on uh, the next versions. And so we looked uh, on the um, data of empty. Is it of the same um, um, side of the piece we are looking on, or from other pieces around it? And we aggregated the data for um, all the different pieces on the board uh, from uh, each party, and uh, we also built some Boolean features based on this 
data, for example, uh, is, uh, is there more uh, pieces around me from my side or from the other side? Is it uh, mostly uh, empty? And so on, such features. And it, we did uh, head improvement. Uh, we can say, see that uh, the checkmate raises to 86% and no checkmate were now able um, to uh, classify well on 87%. Remember, we had 59% previously. So uh, we are doing much better now. And uh, the third version was doing taking the same as before, but extending the radius to two and three. This make much more features. However, 300 features is not that much. And maybe uh, in the next versions, we can uh, add more features uh, without, it's not that much. Um, and, but it's, uh, as I said before, it makes it less generali generalized as we assume something bigger uh, about the game and the board. And indeed, we, we had uh, improvement and now our accuracy is 89.5. Um, and both has, uh, has improved. Um, we can ask further questions if increasing the radius to four, five, six, uh, eight would improve it. I personally don't like this approach and don't want to do it because we assume more about the board and about the game and about the system as a whole. And I would rather think about uh, or suggest different features. So uh, having this benchmark, what, uh, what we think about or what we suggest want to do in the future. Okay, so test different classifiers. Here we used SVM, maybe changing the kernel, maybe think of a nearest neighbor, maybe using uh, some deep learning as a buzzword. I don't know. Um, this is a small change, but uh, I think that it would have um, some interesting effect on the result, integrate out of the board, the edges of the board into the different counts we're doing. Uh, okay, asking who is the winner, which I mentioned earlier. Is it uh, um, the black, the white? Uh, we can uh, either approach it as multi-classification problem, whether the um, uh, white one, whether the black one, or it's not a checkmate, or we can use it just as black or white. Like, if we have a checkmate, is it black or white who won? Okay, asking whether a specific situation is chess, not necessarily checkmate. Uh, complex move uh, detection, okay. Uh, history, something regarding the history, or maybe we can think of other features that to represent us uh, what we have done. Um, maybe, for example, counting how many times this specific uh, piece moved or something else, of course. As I said, and as I mentioned, we want to reduce uh, the, the data we have, the external data we have on the game. Uh, okay, more efficient parsing. We use uh, the chess uh, package, which, which is nice, but on some cases we did um, something like bootstrapping. We took uh, the data, we put it into the chess, we produce what we wanted. Maybe we can um, not, not do this lab and just do it ourselves. Scaling, so uh, for classifying the uh, 800,000 samples, uh, it was really hard for uh, our computers and the uh, SciPy. It uh, eventually happened, but it was hard, so maybe we need to think uh, about distributing it, about using something like, like uh, Shogun that was mentioned here earlier. Uh, I think there are many um, tools that we can uh, think of. And um, surprisingly, we have time for questions, and uh, thank you for listening so far. Well, I'm curious how long it took to go through all those iterations. Um, so actually we're sprinting in the last two weeks, uh, 
about this as well as working at the same time. Um, so I forgot to mention earlier that uh, Niv and me both work in Teki, which is a whole Israeli technology um, company. But so as well as working, we were doing this uh, overnight. Have you ever analyzed um, if there is a recurring pattern in uh, the wrong estimations? Of the, uh... No, we, we, we think of it, we want to say, okay, why... Is like, there a pattern in that? We, we haven't looked for it. We haven't looked into the black box that yeah. said, okay, this is why we're wrong. We do plan to do it because we want to go further, we want to improve it, and we want to make it general. And of course, the big question is, whether we can apply it to other systems. Can we learn physics just by looking at it? For example? Mm, you know, normal chess and giants generally are sta sta uh, stateless. They just get a position and make estimations, not based on that, but based, in, based on their own algorithms. And they don't take into account neither, except for the first part of uh, the game, which is quite easy to predict. Uh, they don't have any um, any state, it's just playing position and uh, not that. Yeah, but knowing what they can do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What they so, yeah. So we're not focused on doing better strategy, yeah. we're focused on lesson yeah. number one. This is how the pieces move. Okay. Thank you very much for listening. Have a nice day.